Okay, welcome back. Um, unfortunately, I had a problem with the audio, so I don't have a live class here, but um, Vivian, one of our other teachers at SLAS, was nice enough to um, drop in and um, just correct any simple math mistakes that I might make in real time while I'm going back through everything we did in class as fast as possible. So we are looking at um, the 2008 Form B FRQ from Calculus AB, um, specifically question four. Um, so our objectives are to create equations of tangent lines and derive and minimize or maximize composite functions. Um, so that's functions inside another function, um, which looks like this. I've got a function of x, which is an integral from 0 to 3x of the square root of 4 plus t, uh, t squared dt, and gx, which is f of sine x. Um, my composite function just means um, we have a function inside another function, um, which means we will have to worry about chain rule when we go to derive that g. Okay, so the first part says find f prime and g prime. So if I want to derive f, um, that would be the derivative of an integral. Um, so when I go to derive f, um, I'll have, um, write my general form somewhere up here. Um, the derivative of the integral from a to b of f of x dx um, would be, I would integrate this to get a, we'll say a capital F for now, of B minus capital F of A, and then I would go to derive that again. Um, and when I go to derive that again, I would have to use chain rule. So when I derive my capital F, I would get back to my original function, lowercase f, of B times B prime because of chain rule, uh, minus my lowercase of F of A times A prime because of chain rule. Um, so my general rule is if you derive an integral from a to b of f of x, you'll end up with the same function. My units have not changed. So if, if I was integrating velocity and then derived it, I would integrate velocity, get displacement, derive it, get back to velocity. Um, so my units do not change. Um, but f of b, b prime minus f of a, a prime. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, if I derive this integral that's inside my function of x, and then I'm going to end up with... Um, the same integral, my units did not change, my function did not change, but I'm going to multiply by the derivative of a. Um, so I'm going to plug in a for t, so t becomes 3x instead, um, so just put in my input. Um, and my derivative of a, derivative of 3x is 3 in terms of x. Um, minus, if I plug in 0 here, this would be the square root of 4, um, but it would be the square root of 4 times the derivative of 0, which is 0. Um, and since anything times 0 is 0, um, my whole lower bound set, f a a prime, is 0. We don't have to worry about it. Any questions on the derivative of f? Mm -hmm. No question. Okay. Oh, I guess I'd already written the rule over here. My bad. But <laughs> uh, general rule. Oh, well, wrote the general rule twice. It's not a huge deal. Um, then gx. Um, we were told gx is our function of sine x. Um, so if that's true, when we go to derive it, um, I would have to use chain rules. This would be um, f prime of sine x times the derivative of sine, which is cosine x dx. Um, so if I go and plug in sine into our derivative of f, which we just got here, um, then I'll replace any x's, replace any inputs um, with sine, which is here. Um, so this would be 3 times the square root of 4 plus um, 3 times sine x squared times cosine x. Any questions on g prime? No question. Okay, for part b. Um, so what I've done is I've copied over what we just got for part a because we're going to need it for part b. So here's our g prime. Um, we want to write an equation of a line tangent to the graph of g at x equals pi. So our general form for a tangent line is y minus b is equal to our slope um, at a. I'm going to write this in. Our other notation actually is so this is y prime at some point a for x y um, times x minus a. Okay, so if I do that, um, I've got 
Um, a point A, B. I was told that my x value for our point is pi, so my y value would be g at pi. Um, so this will be y minus b would be g at pi. g at pi is equal to my derivative at the point. So that's my derivative of g at pi times x minus pi, my x value at the point. Okay, so this here is really my general form here. Okay, then I'm just going to replace um, g pi with what g pi is, g prime with what g prime is, um, and we'll have our equation. So g at pi is, um, since g is f of sine of our input, um, this will be f of sine of pi. Um, so I'm going to plug sine pi in for f. Um, f was the integral from 0 to 3x, that's 3 times our input of f, which is sine pi, 3 sine pi, um, of the square root of 4 plus... Um, this is t squared, so that's um, our input squared, um, which is um, actually don't think that's right. This is going to stay as t squared for this step. It actually won't change anything, but that's t squared. Um, so when we go to integrate this, um, I'm actually going to do this differently. When we go to integrate this, um, my bounds right now are 0 to 3 sine pi. Um, 3 sine pi, because the sine of pi is 0, is 0. And if I integrate anything from um, a point to the same point, then there was no change. Um, so from x equals 0 to x equals 0, my total amount of change will still be 0. So g at pi is 0. I'm getting the same answer. I'm not doing the same thing that I did last time, though. Um, then g prime at pi, um, I can plug directly into this formula that we have up here in white. Um, g prime at pi is um, f prime sine cosine, um, or we said 3 root uh, 4 plus 3 sine x squared cosine x. Um, so I'm just going to replace these x's here um, with my input, which is pi. Um, so this will be 3 root 4 plus 3 sine pi squared. Sine pi is 0, so this is really 4 plus 0 squared is just square root 4, which is 2. Um, so this is 3 times 2 is 6 times the cosine at pi is negative 1, so that's 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, is g prime pi. So I've got y minus 0 equals negative 6 times x minus pi. Now this is standard form of a line, so I can actually leave this as the equation of a line, and I'll be fine. But if you really want to write in slope-intercept form, we can do that. Um, so I'm just going to multiply by negative 6, and that'll be negative 6x, and then negative 6 times negative pi is plus 6 pi. Any questions on the tangent line? No Last one, part C. Um, again, I'm copying our G prime because we're going to need that. So I'm covering up part B and A. Um, but we've got the information from A and B here that we need. I want to write an integral expression that represents the maximum of G on the interval from 0 to pi and justify our answer. Well, in order to get a maximum or a minimum, we'll have to derive our equation, set the derivative equal to 0, and solve for x. That means getting the critical points. Um, however, um, while the critical points will tell us any relative minimums or maximums, um, relative minimum, relative maximum, um, there is still a possibility that our absolute maximum or minimum will be the start point or end point of a given interval where the slope is not zero. So if I want to find the maximum value between 0 and pi, I do need to test the start point, the end point, and any points where the slope is 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the derivative equal to 0 to find any critical points. If I set the derivative equal to 0, then I can say g prime x equals 0. Therefore, 0 is equal to f prime sine cosine. Now, this f prime of sine... Um, if I'm looking at an interval from 0 to pi, then that means on the unit circle, um, my sine value should be positive. 
And if the sine value is positive, then my derivative of f should also be positive. Okay, I'll go back to our derivative of f equation back here. Um, my input for this equation will be positive. Um, so if I take the square root of 4 plus 3 times a positive number squared times 3, I should get a positive answer. So what that tells me um, is this term, f prime sine x, is always positive on our interval between 0 and pi. So I've got some positive number times the cosine of x that I want to set equal to 0. will only equal 0 if this other term, cosine x, equals 0. So even though this looks more complicated than it is, um, because this first term can never equal 0 on our interval, we don't really have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm really worried about when is the cosine equal to 0? Um, between 0 and pi. And the cosine is only equal to 0 between 0 and pi on our unit circle right here, um, when x is pi over 2. Um, at the angle pi over 2, our cosine is 0. Um, so that tells me g prime of, uh, of x is only equal to 0 on the interval 0 to pi on pi over 2 which gives us our critical point that could be a relative minimum or maximum that I need to test. Okay, so we're going to test it um, by plugging that point into our, um, our original function g. I also need to test the start point and the end point. Um, so if I plug this in, um, my x value 0 to g um, at 0, my g would be f of the sine of 0, which is f at 0. Um, if I change my input for f at 0, um, so that'll be 0, the integral from 0 to 3 times 0 is the integral from 0 to 0. If I'm integrating from one constant to the same constant, there was no change. So I could say g of x must be 0. And it's actually the same math if I plug in pi. Um, g at pi is f times the sine at pi. Sine at pi is also 0. And if I plug in 0 into my function, that's um, the integral from 0 to 0 is still 0. So both my start point and end point's values of g are 0. Which leaves us with just solving for the value of pi over 2. Now, I was told we need to write but do not evaluate an integral expression. So I actually did more math here than we need the first time around. Um, if I'm just going to write the integral expression for the maximum, um, then I just need an integral for the y value. So I'm going to plug in pi over 2 in for g. Um, g is f of sine at pi over 2, um, and f is the integral from 0 to 3x of square root 4 plus t squared dt. Um, so that's the integral from 0 to 3 um, times the sine at pi halves, which is 1. So that's 3 times 1 is 3 of the square root of 4 plus t squared dt. t squared dt. Okay, we do not need to solve it, so I don't need any of this stuff because they asked only for the integral expression. Um, so we've got our answer for the maximum value since we know that this will end up being positive. And that positive value then should be bigger than the zero of our start point and end point. And it's the only point where the slope is zero. Um, so that tells me it should be a relative maximum. Any questions on C? Question. Um, what's your question? I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Okay, um, so homework for this one is question five and six of the same year. So that's the 2008 form BFRQ. Thank you very much.